William Grant Still's Afro-American Symphony, performed by Paul Freeman in the Chicago Sinfonietta. The piece premiered in 1931, and it was the first symphony by a black composer to be performed by a major American symphony orchestra. It's filled with blues influences, and it was the most performed American symphony until 1950. Still's use of the blues quotes the contemporary popular music at the time, but he wrote that he didn't want to portray contemporary black culture, but rather the quote, sons of the soil who still retain so many of the traits peculiar to their African forebears. It's an interesting anachronism, using contemporary music to depict scenes and people who lived over 50 years before, and it reflects on a tragic disconnect of the 1920s. It was the Harlem Renaissance. Black art and culture flourished and was eagerly consumed by white audiences. However, this consumption of black culture didn't directly translate to civil rights. We talk about the Cotton Club as this jazz age institution where artists like Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Adelaide Hall, and Cab Calloway launched their careers, but the Cotton Club was a whites only venue. While white audiences rapidly consumed the music by black artists that gave the jazz age its name, there was an explosion of racial violence against black Americans. From the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921, where the most prosperous black neighborhood in the country was razed to the ground by white rioters, to the resurgence of the KKK, which had between four and six million members in 1925, to the Scottsboro Boys, who were sentenced to death over completely false accusations against them. There were countless instances of violence against black Americans happening at the same time as the Harlem Renaissance. It's this disconnect between the consumption of black art and the well-being of black people that makes William Grant Still's explicit connection of black music to the history of black people so important. This first movement is based around W.C. Handy's St. Louis Blues, sung here by Bessie Smith. Still uses this contemporary blues tune throughout the movement, yet the epigraph for the movement is from a dialect poem by Paul Lawrence Dunbar about the antebellum South. This use of modern music with historical themes puts the two in dialogue with each other, forcing the audience to consider the two as one. It's the same concept that Hamilton would use in 2015. Historical themes, contemporary music. It gives the past a present immediacy and shows, in Still's case, that the current racial violence of the 20s is rooted in the history of slavery. Still continues this linking of contemporary music to the past in the third movement. Listen to this counter melody played by the horns in the opening. Sound familiar? I got rhythm, I got music, I got my man who could ask for anything more. Both were written in 1930, but many claim both tunes were based off a riff that Still himself played in the pit of the hit musical Shuffle Along in 1921. Either way, the sound was completely contemporary with the popular music of the time. However, the Paul Dunbar epigraph for this movement is an antebellum sermon. It's yet another example of still linking the past to the present by overlaying a historical moment with contemporary music. But beyond that, he shows how the music is inseparable from the history of the people who create it. The disconnect between the consumption of black art and the well-being of black people is unfortunately all too prevalent throughout the history of music. Many popular artists have taken on this disconnect, from Nina Simone's Mississippi Goddamn to Childish Gambino's This Is America. When we consume art, we're consuming history. Music always exists in time, and that's what's so poignant about this symphony. That while the music of the symphony is so rooted in the time of the 1930s, the legacy of slavery and institutionalized racism was, and is, just as much present as it is past. When we listen to this music today, written at the halfway point between the Civil War and the present day, we recognize that even though the music is firmly dated to 1930, the racist legacy of slavery, unfortunately, is far too contemporary. <laughs>